And as you take it in, just look around. I want you to look. There's a truck all the way down there, the water all the way up to the windows. When I heard officials screaming, we found her, we found her, your heart just starts racing. And at that point, you're just praying that she's alive. You can see that open passenger window right down there. I just spoke with the driver. He said that's how he got out of the car. He said when he was driving on market, he had to avoid another car and he turned, hit the sidewalk and the car flipped. Right. How tall is this? 100 feet? That's about 80, 90. 90 feet. 80, 90 feet? Oh, that's, right. that's much slow. easier. Later on in the afternoon, they're gonna watch the wind because if the wind starts to pick up, if the humidity drops down, they're gonna look for the homes that are north of the fire as being potentially in danger. FAA will be here around noon today, Bill and Kim, but I heard Kim mention that we are in the backyard of a home. Mike, if you can pan right I mean, you can see how close I am to a home right here in Ocean Isle Beach. And then if you look over just in the backyard, right past in that wooded area, you see the plane, of course, the light giving us a better look than we had in the 5 a.m. hour. We keep walking down here. You can see these water lines as well. And there's a little bit of a break right now. Now I talked with one of the utilities guys. He said that over here you can see they've kind of got this lake that flows in. It's supposed to go under here and kind of stream on through. But with all the water that they saw last night, really just push that water all the way over the road, rushing through. He hit almost every single bullseye. Let me, let me show this real quick. This is like perfect. And I was like, holy cow, that's so impressive. And he's like, yeah, it's okay. Would I be putting out a fire right now? Sure, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that means no. Your neighbor is the bell, the battleship. I like drawing her dress, mainly because it was really easy. <laughs> <laughs> you sound a lot like me. We keep talking about the golfers and the people who are coming to watch, but we didn't even mention the grounds crew. Yeah. And they've been out here, I know, usually around 4 a.m. when we show up. When we showed up today, they'd already been out there. I talked to one girl and she said, oh, we've been here all night. No update on the driver yet. Of course, that's at the top of our minds right now, Bill, is how he or she is doing. I want you to take a look at the scene. More trucks have come since we last checked in. A lot of pooling on the roads, a lot of wind, a lot of rain. I don't know if you can see behind me, but the grass and the trees already really starting to whip around. What do you think, Max, and what's your favorite um, part? I just like learning about potential energy's transformation to kinetic energy. I don't know what that means. <laughs> right, step back. Right, right. We're gonna do a clean and jerk ladder. Remember, both feet at the same time. There you go. The first thing, take it slowly. This book is dangerous. <laughs> Children's books should not make you nervous. We're here at Defy Gravity, learning a lot of flips and tricks with Solomon Harvey, part of the Balance Squad and an American Ninja Warrior. And as promised, here's the trick that I learned. You can always watch those Olympics <laughs> on WECT. You can do backhand too, that's a thing. I would recommend maybe even overhand. Overhand right. and let it roll. <laughs> Here you go, let's try again. This is going well, guys. Kim, I don't think disc golf is in my future. I don't need a license to drive this, yeah, Kim. I, I got a crash course. I'm pretty sure you need a special <laughs> license to drive that. There's candied bacon. You can eat that, but you should also eat some vegetables. You have to do it both moderation. You know what, Kim? That's what Mondays are for. Here she goes. Okay. That's my girl. That's my girl. That's got bacon on it too. Oh no. Oh. <laughs> One of the hardest hit parts of southern southeastern North Carolina has been Fair Bluff and that's where water levels are already high and rising. Now our Molly Oak has been traveling all morning long. She set out for Whiteville, did that before five o'clock this morning, ran into water before she was even able to get there, but somehow she has not made it to Fair Bluff, so we're going to take Molly live there in Fair Bluff this afternoon. Molly, it's taken you a while to get there. Describe the scene and what you were seeing play out in front of you. Exactly, Bob. Roadblock after roadblock because of all that flooding we saw from Hurricane Matthew. And now you can see behind me, Fair Bluff is completely underwater. The road's looking a lot more like rivers here in downtown. This is Main Street where the water, they're estimating about five to six feet, but in some places up to eight feet. Now, they are evacuating people. About half the town has been evacuated right now, but they're saying that they have never seen anything like this. Fire department calling this historical. They have no way of telling how many people this is affected, and they don't know when it's going to stop. Now, this is all from the Lumber River overflowing, just coming throughout the town. But for those who I've been able to speak to, everyone has kind of had the same sentiments of never seeing something like this before. And as you take it in, just look around. I want you to look. There's a truck all the way down there the water all the way up to the windows. Now, people were saying that they were following this truck when it was driving and it just completely floated off down there. So again, reminding people to turn around, don't drown. I know we've been saying this over and over, but some of the standing water can be extremely dangerous. And 
with depths like this, people really should not even be trying to drive because you never know about that road washout, Bob. Yeah, Molly, I'm, I'm going to go out on a limb here and say this, I believe, is the first ever live report from a boat going down the central line of downtown Fair Bluff. Uh, the, the pictures here are just incredible to see the amount of water that's in that area. I know you've got someone obviously on the boat steering you with this. Has, has that person said anything to you about what they have ever seen? I, I, I've got to think this doesn't even go on record with anybody living there. Yeah, the man who is taking us around the boat, he's actually the owner of the drugstore down here. He said, never seen anything like that. And that's just continually the people who I've been able to talk to, whether it's fire department, other officials who have come into town helping out, a pastor of one of the churches that's right on the corner who didn't get as much water damage. Everyone's saying that they have never seen something like this. And honestly, Bob, we've talked about both being from Florida, both going through multiple hurricanes. I've never seen flooding like this before either, and I hope to never see something like this again. And Molly, where you're at, obviously the water's so deep going through downtown that there, there's nobody there, thankfully, right now. Where are all the residents right now? Where are people trying to find safe havens at this hour? Right now, I'm told the highest point is the railroad tracks, which is just about a block over, and we've seen a few people with backpacks or even trash bags walking, trying to get out of the area. Really, it's to the point where they can, whatever they can carry in a bag and get out. That's what they're at. But again, just look at this pickup truck. I mean, up to the windows right now, the bed completely full of water, just kind of abandoned here. Seems that those, those people who did evacuate had to just grab whatever they could carry and get out immediately because, again, they don't know if it's still rising, if it can keep rising anymore, or if it's done. Really, at a point where they're just hoping that it's finished and will start decreasing now. But again, just look at this. I mean, it's a scene that I've never seen before and something that, again, I hope to never see again. Uh, photographer Mike But look, Pelzer. the bridge is even with the water right now. Yeah, you and, and Mike Pelzer are doing great work there. I mean, the pictures speak for themselves. Stay safe. Tell your, uh, the gentleman there, thank you for getting your out and about on this. And obviously, that impact there will be for days. We'll continue with reports from Fair Bluff throughout the day here on WECT. Good morning, everyone. I'm Bill Murray here in the WECT studios. We've got new information just in on the search for that missing girl. An Amber Alert issued for Stephanie Lopez Castro, abducted from her home last night. This is video being sent to us back from WECT's Molly Oak, who is live there on River Road in Wilmington. Again, we see the rescue crews there bringing in a bag into the back of an ambulance what's in that we don't really know what that is at this point uh, lots of canine units there as well there is police activity all along river road right there again the call went out to be able to find this little girl about five o'clock she was reported missing from our palm oaks subdivision right there in monkey junction uh, about eight uh, five o'clock last night this has been an ongoing search there were calls about an hour ago that there was some sort of activity along River Road, we sent our Molly Oak, who had been in the Royal Oaks or Palm Oaks subdivision earlier today. We sent her over there to find out what's happening you there. You just see someone getting pulled into an ambulance. Now, we cannot confirm if that is a boy or a girl yet. We haven't been able to talk to officials, but we did see people running into the woods, running back out, carrying someone in almost an orange hammock-looking thing, putting them into that ambulance. Now, of course, we are still working to learn if this is that missing six-year-old girl that has been missing since last night around 5 o'clock. We're really just hoping to find this little girl again, six years old. We have just been confirmed that Stephanie is alive and she'll be headed to the hospital. I know that was when we had seen, talked, heard them shouting. We found her earlier. They were asking for water and I told you we thought we saw someone being carried into EMS. We have been told now and can confirm that Stephanie Lopez Castro is alive, Bill. How terrific is that? Bill, I just want to give you a little sense of perspective from here as well. I can see officers crying here. And so you can tell how really in-depth and really attached to this case they were. I think it gives us all a little bit of faith at how hard they've been working throughout the hours of the night. I mean, you've said it, hours and hours have gone by since she was first reported missing at 5 o'clock last evening. So to see an officer react in this way, it really just it breaks my heart completely. But so, again, incredible that this little girl has been found safe after so many hours of missing. See you right now, I'm just fixing, fixing to get me a cup of coffee. I still have electricity at the moment. Oh, oh wow, that's surprising. I have electricity the whole time. That's really surprising. Well, I shouldn't be talking because it's probably getting my electrical panel at any time. Yeah, knock on wood. <laughs> <laughs> 
It ain't funny. But uh, anyway, I'm good. Okay. I'm just gonna drink a couple cups of coffee and if it gets up into my house, I'm gonna start putting my guns in the attic. And then I'm gonna get out of here. Is that why you're trying to stay in the house? Well, I'm trying to stay in my house because I, I don't I'm not gonna get robbed. Yeah, that's a concern for a lot of people, it sounds like. Well, it is, and it's a shame it's gotta be that way, but that's just the way it is. Have you ever seen something like this before? No, ma'am, in Hurricane Florida, it got up the, to the front doorstep of that house and never got no further. This is crazy. It's worse than crazy. I'm gonna lose everything I worked my whole life for. Already have. All the gates are now open as people make their way to the course. They're probably going to try to find that perfect spot to take a picture of their favorite golfer. Well, what if I told you you could take one with him? Come on, Jules. Let's make that putt. Come on. He was quiet this morning. He really was. I, I, I thought he, you know, on the course he seems to be jovial and very friendly, but today he seemed a little reserved. All right. Be good, Bill. Top, baby. A chance to chat with the champ. I asked if I could replace his caddy. But he didn't respond at all. That means no. I, I take that as a no. Yeah, I, I, he seemed to be a nice guy. I've never met him before. Until today. Well, sort of. That's my buddy Phil here. <laughs> yes, it is. He'll be here and there around the course during the tournament. And this Phil will be a little easier to catch up with. He didn't move around a lot. Yeah. He's a little slow, a little sluggish. Yeah. All right, ready? Here we go. The click of a camera and a hashtag will take you from the green to the big screen. But don't worry about the camera adding 10 pounds. Okay. And he's lost some weight, I thought. He does look very little thin. slim today. Little thin. He looked a lot, a little too dish. And while Phil is the talk of the town, like you're talking to him. he's so thrilled to be here, he's speechless.